Alex, thank you for joining us today. You and your colleagues have just released a report called Swaziland, Southern Africa's Forgotten Crisis. Why do you characterize the situation as a crisis? Well, Swaziland is forgotten and its economics are unstable. The country is on a trajectory to a crisis. So to draw people's attention to that they actually have to think about Swaziland, they can't just ignore it, we decided that crisis was the appropriate term because the country can't sustain itself on the trajectory that it's on at the moment. It will have to reform, otherwise it will be in serious crisis. Alex, you said that the situation in Swaziland is unsustainable. I presume that you partially refer to economic terms. Could you please elaborate on that? Well, Swaziland is going to have to diversify away from relying on uh, remittances from the Southern African Customs Union. Uh, its sugar industry at the moment is also going to have to reform and it's going to have to look at, uh, at a diversification. Its uh, timber industry has gone through decline. There's going to be, have to be some serious thinking about manufacturing, um, even Coca-Cola. The, the, is bottled in South Africa, although the essence uh, is, 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 is manufactured in, in, in Swaziland. So it's really important that Swaziland now considers how it can diversify an economy that isn't just based on saku and sugar. Swaziland's King Swati III has recently referred to a vision he had of his country becoming a monarchical democracy. What does this mean? Well, the king uh, a week ago on Friday had a vision and he had, his vision was that the, the system in Swaziland, the political system, uh, needed to change and it would be, uh, in effect, monarchical democracy. That's what he said. What that actually means has got all the Swazis debating. Nobody's quite sure what it means. Uh, aides close to him were surprised that he came out with that public statement. They weren't expecting it. So there's a debate whether this is a rebranding of the political system that's in Swaziland at the moment, the Tikundla one, which means that you can have elections but political parties can't compete, they can only be individuals, or whether there's something new that's going to, to, to emerge. And what people are asking for at the moment is that the king uh, uh, speak publicly defining what this term is, because it's unique. There is no other example in the world of this monarchical democracy, which is what he's talking about. Parliamentary elections are supposed to take place in Swaziland on the 20th of September. What can we expect from the ballot? There have been primary elections already. 20th of September are the second round, the final round. There are all sorts of people competing in them as individuals because parties are banned from, from campaigning in Swaziland. And I think we'll see a lot of people um, elected that have a reform agenda, have a vision that is different from the one that has been in Swaziland uh, in recent years. That's important because there'll be more diversity of debate and if a significant number are elected that could mean that the king has to consider bringing some of them into government as, as ministers. So this is an important election for Swaziland. Okay, political parties aren't themselves allowed to run, but individuals who are affiliated to political parties as individuals can run and they will carry their various agendas with them. Alex, what can South Africa and the international community at large do in order to improve the governance situation in Swaziland? Well, uh, the United States and the EU uh, can work together more closely in terms of governance and human rights. And I think that South Africa, obviously, as the regional hegemon, has a role in encouraging the king to look at what the economics are saying, that at the moment the economic pattern in Swaziland is not sustainable, that the country has to reform. And South Africa, as well as other SADC countries, Mozambique, but also probably Tanzania, that plays a prominent role in SADC at the moment, uh, have a role to talk to Swaziland to draw attention to, uh, after the elections, when the new government is constituted after the 20th of September, that reform is needed Otherwise, the country, which is a middle-income country currently, will continue to deteriorate socially and economically. Your report specifically refers to examples of Bhutan and Nepal that Swaziland could learn from. Why specifically those two countries? Well, Nepal uh, had a traumatic uh, process where the monarchy uh, in the end collapsed because of the lack of reform. 
and Bhutan is an example where there has been a successful transition from an absolute monarchy to a constitutional one and there could well be good lessons for Swaziland from that. So we highlighted these. Many people talk about Lesotho being a model for Swaziland. I'm not sure that's the case. But I do think in particular Bhutan is a positive example of what Swaziland could look at. And Nepal is an example of where Swaziland, if it doesn't consider reform, it could be a result that uh, everybody would, would regret. Alex, thank you for joining us.